Week 10 is upon us. We're going to talk trades on today's episode, break down the latest Odell Beckham Jr. news, and a whole lot more. Don't miss it. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy. Foot Clan, want to thank Shopify for helping support our business, helping us run an awesome website. If you go to shopballers.com and you check it out, that is Shopify. We have used Shopify forever. They give entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big businesses. So your upstarts, your startups, or established businesses alike can sell everything everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility with Shopify, and it's more than a store. You can connect with your customer, drive sales, manage your day-to-day. -day. Shopify instantly lets you accept all major payment methods, reach customers online and across social networks in an ever-growing suite of channel integrations and apps, including Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and more. Gain insights as you grow with detailed reporting. Go to shopify.com slash footballers, it's all lowercase, for a free 14-day trial to check it out and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash footballers right now. Shopify.com slash footballers. This is Melvin Gore, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Wednesday, November 10th, the Fantasy Footballers back with you. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland here as well. Busy day, fantasy football to talk about. So much so that not only will we be producing this show, mm -hmm. we will be with you this afternoon on Spotify Green Room for another hour answering questions likely at that point in time reacting to the destination of Odell Beckham Jr. Ooh. Live on Spotify Green Room. Please join us. I know that they have expanded to allow the Android users of the world to participate in the live chat as well. And uh, all you got to do is grab the free app, follow Fantasy Footballers, and you'll be notified when we're live. But only like, you know, if you like to party. Right. Yeah. If you're a loser, yeah. stay away. You, yeah, if you're boring, we don't we don't want you in that room. <laughs> well, they do limit it, right? Yeah. So you have it to asks like, you when you when you go. Do in, you like the party? Is, and this, are you sure? Do you like the party? And that's when people freak out. They're like, ah, I don't know. Do I? Do I really like the party? YouTube.com/slash The Fantasy Footballers. If you want to watch the show, you can subscribe over there. Click the bell. Mike goes live on YouTube every Sunday morning, answering last-minute start-sit questions, getting you ready for the week, week 10 coming up. And uh, I want to invite you over to jointhefoot.com. Become a part of our community. You get an extra show every week. You get premium perks, resources, discount at shopballers.com. You get access to our book. You get a lot of things that make fantasy football more fun because w the reason this show exists, uh, the reason we do what we do is because we want you to enjoy the year. And we get a bonus week this year. They add bonus. it. And, and next year, they're going to do it again. They're mm -hmm. just going to keep, at some point in time. Year-round football. They, I mean, yeah. It's week 45. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's dead. <laughs> it's football time again. Uh, shout out to the current megal current megalable leader. Oh, we have a new leader? Jones Mark J10 is 8-1 eight, eight with the most total points it is impressive league. that uh, they have a loss as the highest scoring of 15,000 uh, teams. However, I, I looked at their roster today, and I, I hate to say it, but they have Derrick Henry. Oh, no. Ooh. 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 So I'm sorry. I'm I've, sorry for your loss. I've still not accepted that situation for my team. You don't need to. Because once you – Denial's a you, powerful force, look, man. Look, you can keep playing him. Maybe it's worth it. The league won't stop that. Has he? Did he score last week? No. No. Oh, all right. Zeus and buy, sell. 
Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, last week Jason ended up getting more of these right than Mike and I. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thanks to selling Kyle Pitts with 10 fantasy points, he ended up with 7.7, tied in 15. Um, Stupid drops. Uh, That's let, true. If he doesn't draw, if he catches that one at the beginning no. of the game, then this, then he smashes ten hey, points. Hey, but ifs and nuts, ifs yep. and nuts, if if ifs, ifs and, and nuts are candies and butts. <laughs> that's, that's the saying. <laughs> Doing really well this morning. Uh, you don't know it out there, but I may or may not have hit the intro right in the middle of Jason talking when we started the <laughs> podcast. I, you know, need more sleep. I guess. Week ten by yourself. Let's start here. DeAndre Swift returns from the bye. Has Pittsburgh. Is he a top 12 quarterback this week? No. Sell. Yeah, I I don't think he's going to throw enough passes. Yeah. I said quarterback. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're you're on fire. (laughs) Do I need to take over? Why don't you switch seats here? (laughs) I've had caffeine. Yeah. You had some green smoothie. There's some nasty concoction. Maybe that's messing me up. Mm. I think there's mushrooms in there. (laughs) Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> How many hands do I have? <laughs> so I hallucinated DeAndre Swift, the quarterback. Yeah. Um, is he a top 12 running back this week against Pittsburgh? They've allowed the second fewest running back fantasy points per game, but it, you know DeAndre Swift's not a normal running back. No, he is not as he uh, doesn't really carry the ball much. He's averaging you know just over 11 attempts a game. But seven targets, which is like those are the type of numbers that we like for fantasy football. Keep him healthy, but also get a whole bunch of fantasy football points. He, despite having like a really good season, currently the the running back 12, even coming out of the bye, he's only been in the top 12 in a half point scoring format three weeks. Still very solid, delightful player to have on your team, but he, he just, he doesn't hit that really high threshold I would say mostly because the the Lions aren't scoring a ton of points so his touchdown opportunities are far and and few between uh so I'm gonna sell the top 12 yeah I, and Pittsburgh's just they're, they're a solid defense yeah I'm I'm going to sell as well last time we saw him he didn't have Jamal Williams um uh, available and that turned into a bad game somehow yeah it, I I think um with with the fact that I don't expect him to get in the end zone against Pittsburgh, um, it's possible he ends up with 10 receptions for 100 yards. I mean, that's, you know, receiving yards. That's uh, in his range of outcomes. But um, I think while he is a safe play, he's not one of your high upside guys. So if you're saying he's going to finish the week as an RB1, I think there will be 12 other players better than him. I'll sell it as well. Mike Williams against Minnesota, four catches. He had seven oh, seven plus receptions in four of the first five games. Oh. Each of the past three games, five targets, two receptions. Does he come down with four balls against Minnesota? We've had to lower the bar so much for Mike Williams. This is sad. It is sad. Um, at least he's been consistent with uh, five for two um, over the last month, every single week. I am going to buy this. Um, I, I think that he is still talented. I know that the announcers – during the broadcast, we're talking about how he's dealing with injury, but I don't think he was on the injury report, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure how that's lining up, but it, it kind of makes sense because he hasn't really looked uh, the same. That being said, his last three matchups: um, Baltimore on the road, New England, the New England Patriots, where we talk about them taking away the number one option, and then last week, uh, Philadelphia, they put their best corner on him. So I, I, I think against Minnesota. Um, there's going to be enough points going on where where Mike Williams is involved. Four catches is not, I think, uh, uh, an unmanageable line, so I will buy. I think you convinced me to change my opinion during your uh, d- conversation. Which direction? I'm going to – that's a good point. I'll buy it. I think he'll get back on track this week. Uh, you know, he had some – you know, Slay's a good corner, and even though he left injured during the very end of the game – there were some plays that I think any other corner or the majority of them would not have stopped Mike Williams from catching the football. I think he'll get back to four. Yeah, I'll buy it too. Well, well, well. Hmm, let's hope we have some differences here. Jalen Hurts against Denver. Is he a top 12 quarterback? He was a top 10 
every single week. I said quarterback, right? Like I'm, yep. I'm doing this right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the last two weeks, quarterback 25, quarterback 12 on the dot. So uh, in Denver. Yeah, this is, this is an easy buy to me. Uh, and the reason why is because he, he hasn't been good for fantasy. He hasn't been great for fantasy the last two weeks when he's looked good on the field. I don't expect him to look good against Denver. I think that they are a very good defense, and they're going to make so him look So are the Chargers. Look I know bad. they were missing some DBs, but, I mean, 11 for 17. Yeah, I mean, I just expect Jalen Hurts to have a bad game. Uh, okay. So he's going to be great for fantasy, <laughs> and he's going to run a lot, and I definitely think he'll be a top-12 quarterback. Mike? I will buy it as well. I'm not going to bet against a man who's averaging – a quarterback who's averaging 55 rushing yards a game. Now, here's the interesting thing. Thank you. Andy is in a spot now. Bye. We're, oh, oh, no. Boo. Boo. We're all winning this week, boys. <laughs> First place. Yeah. Yeah. That was Buy or Sell brought to you by pristineauction.com. Pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. That was very uh, Christopher Walkian. <laughs> the Creed concert just keeps <laughs> exacting its toll. When you end the statement on an up note, mm-hmm. I'm Ron Burgundy. You're, yes, and <laughs> what else? <laughs> All right, uh, news to talk about. We had conflicting reports yesterday on a Dalvin Cook legal situation. Uh, his team came out said he was the victim of domestic abuse later a lawsuit was filed against him uh as he was accused of being the perpetrator adam schefter was the original tweeter of the situation and the tr- truth of the situation now is that there's nothing actionable for fantasy players to do correct um i guess if you wanted to to try to ensure dalvin cook against the unknown you could try to put madison on your roster but this was a situation that happened in 2020. The police were not called when it occurred. And the legal situation, he said, she said, is going to have to play out before anything important happens. Yeah, the the situation is it's unfortunate because clearly something happened. Uh, Someone was a victim yeah, of and, and we, domestic abuse. But we, we, we just don't know. They're basically accusing each other of like the exact same thing. It's It's a very bizarre situation. But... As far as like just news and what can you do, this really feels like a situation that's that won't shake out until like the off season. Yeah, I, so I for, don't expect this. Like I'm I'm not you know seeing this news and like oh no this is gonna you know right. sideline uh, Dalvin Cook unless something different and Correct. bigger comes out. I I don't expect um, action to happen to Dalvin Cook this season. As of right now, unless Brooks has new information for me, Odell Beckham Jr. is a free agent and does not have a new team yet. So the report this morning is that he has narrowed down his choices to the Chiefs, the Packers, and the Saints. I know the Patriots did their due diligence. You had rumors about Seattle, but the th- it's where he wants to go now, right? It's no longer who's sure. got priority based on their record. Mm-hmm. It's where does he want to play, and right now it feels – like he wants to play with Aaron Rodgers, uh, he wants to have a quarterback that he has confidence can get him the football, which and- is is interesting because I was you know was reading some some beat reporters talking about it, saying that it feels like he is leveraging for a for a multi that he's not just trying to get a one year deal here where he where he can go be a rental player and interesting it, it, and if you're going to go to Green Bay, you have to be aware of the situation that Rodgers uh, there's a there is a probability that Rodgers is not the Packers quarterback next year. Yeah, but I I mean, it makes sense in the sense that, you know, some players can bet on themselves and they know that they'll have a great season and then they can get a big contract. He knows that the they're going to see him play football. And see, so he wants to get the multi-year. It's, co- Stop. it's comedic. Here, here's the truth. Situ- the true situation for Odell Beckham Jr., the real truth of Odell is that he is a solid professional wide receiver. He is no longer the elite, you know, that that infinite future that he once possessed, the legendary future, it it's not there anymore. But he is still superior to yes the majority of the NFL receivers, and he he showed it in Cleveland this year. Yeah. Beckham 
had he, plays that he was bla- – like all the crap we give him, Baker missed him repeatedly on plays that he, you know, tactically – you know, broke out of a route, had himself wide open. A touchdown was sitting there for him. He is obviously a better NFL wide receiver than Alan Lazard, than McCall Hardman, and then any, the, anyone right, that the Saints right. have. So he will be a, a help for those teams. Where would he have the most fantasy value of those three teams? It's the team that's going to throw the ball the most. So I, to me, it's it's not the Saints. Uh, I would I would say that it's probably. It's probably the Chiefs. It's Green Bay for me. It's Green Bay for me as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll find out. Yeah. It, it, it's it's a fun storyline to it follow. Is. Yes. And he gets to choose where he wants to be. And if I if we know Odell, he he's going to choose based on the information he's getting that he's going to be utilized as well. It is. It's going to be better for him fantasy wise where he goes. It is ironic you talk about he is a you know he's not a superstar anymore, but he's a good NFL wide receiver. That's right. He only cost like seven million dollars this year. That was not that. If you had claimed him off of the waivers, right? And all and thirty-one teams said no, thank you. Yeah, but he also they he said no, thank you to like twenty-eight of them <laughs> right. behind the scenes. Sure, and uh, that's for half a year, so that's a fifteen million dollars salary. Um, Nick Chubb placed on the reserve COVID list. Yeah, this broke after our waiver show had already been recorded. Yeah, Demetric Felton as well. So that shoots Dearness Johnson to the tippy top of any waiver list, which uh, I mean, at this point in time, you know, he's probably on a roster. So he, yeah, he he also could have been dropped, you know, right after uh, last week. And as far as the news we can report on Nick Chubb, we were told he is vaccinated, so that means he's in the protocol of. It's still possible that he gives he posts back to back negative tests within the twenty four hours and plays. It's just unlikely at this point. Kareem Hunt not ready yet, but he is eligible to come off IR. And uh, Kevin Stefanski saying, you know, he's not sure if he's going to practice this week. There is there's a lot of hurdles to overcome between not practicing and being relevant on Sunday. So we don't expect him to be back yet. Sam Darnold. <laughs> This, this is tough because I don't want to make fun of injury. No, here. I don't either. But the report was so insane. He's going to miss several weeks with a fractured scapula. It took them a couple days to find it. How does that happen? It took them a couple days. Like, did they take to the break the scapula? Did they take the X-ray and then they keep looking? They're, they're like, oh crap, we 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 can't develop this. We're out of the uh, the film. And then they had to drive across town, and then they got stuck in traffic. They got lost. How does taking an X-ray for a fracture take multiple days to figure out there is actually? Got to find injury? the right doctor to find that fracture. <laughs> <laughs> keep looking. Keep, there's we know there's something. enhance. Tj Tj Walker um, will take over. Mm-hmm. This is not an upgrade. This is probably a downgrade in passing volume uh he's been absolutely atrocious as a professional quarterback he's, See, i, I he's, don't know that you can fully say that because he has i can fully say that i just did he he's, has, he's has well yeah you you can you have the right to say he's that. thrown absolutely. one nfl touchdown and he has thrown four or five interceptions yes he has thrown five he has a passer rating under 40 he has played one complete game in his career it's and, not going to be good this week against arizona it's going to be bad. Yes. It's going to be really bad. But my like, I just want to highlight, he has played one game in his professional career. They won that game 20 to 0, and that was one of DJ Moore's best games of last year where he was kind of hot or cold with Teddy Bridgewater. So this isn't to me with PJ Walker coming in and how terrible Sam Darnold was. I don't think I'm looking at DJ Moore, DJ Moore going it's getting worse. He played. It could get better. He had 14 attempts in week seven of this year. He completed three of those passes. So take that for what you will. Three for 14. But, I mean. Same Darnold. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just a tough matchup as well. Agreed. Um, but gets Washington and Miami after that if. Darnold will be missing Darnold's several out. weeks. Yeah. Nick Underhill reporting that the Saints hosted three free agent running backs. Carry on Johnson, Rodney Smith, and Josh Adams. Alvin Kamara went to the medical tent for a brief period in Sunday's loss. So this is kind of, you know, plain detective. The clues are that maybe he's banged up. 
And yeah. so Mark Ingram suddenly looks very, very important. interesting. If mm -hmm. he is available on waivers, you absolutely need to scoop him up. Um, th this is one of those where you don't want Sunday to come around and have this surprise, shocking Alvin Kamara is going to sit this game out and be like, we knew nothing of this. These are those tea leaves you try to pay attention to. If they're bringing in running backs to work out, then someone is a little banged up, so mm -hmm. be aware. We had hoped that Antonio Brown would be available to the Buccaneers after the bye week. Video coming out yesterday, the fact that Bruce Arians said he's wearing a walking boot still, and the fact that they signed Brashad Perryman to their practice squad say – this is not looking great. And, mm -hmm. and Arians, you know, he came out and he didn't play budget magician earlier. He, he said this could be a long, long term yeah. injury right away. So Antonio Brown is, is not likely to be out there this week or in the immediate future. Do you drop him? Do you move on? I have no, not been, no. I have not moved on not. because no. he's going to be great. But if, I mean, if he's out another three weeks, he represents too much upside. Agreed. Uh, Eric Ebron is going to return to action Sunday against the Lions. No, yeah, what, yeah, it just makes it makes it a little more sketchy for the Muth. Yeah, it does. We'll talk about. I mean, your confidence in the value of of the Muth a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, where are you guys with that situation? He has a, a, a ton of potential, earning the trust of Big Ben, but it's not like we haven't seen. 50 tight ends score two touchdowns and it, then disappear. It's so. not about the uh, the the multiple touchdowns for me. It's the fact that like he's been seeing a a very solid uh, um, target share in the offense since he has taken over for 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 Eric Ebron. They drafted him highly, so it's this isn't a Big Ben trust question. This is a Mike Tomlin trust question. Where Eric Ebron has been just you know. Bleh for this team for, for quite some time. So hopefully they see the rookie emerging and being truly efficient that they're, that they choose to, to stick with him as the primary guy. And then instead of these, uh, other Randro, uh, Randos like Gentry and, and I don't know who was the guy that they threw like a, there was a, a really important play. It was a third down pass and it was some player that you'd never even heard of. Hopefully that's Eric Ebron and, and the Muth will continue to be Luth. The uh, mention of the Steelers reminds me that we, I told you I watched the, sh the game without the audio on. Mm -hmm. it, it was made clear to us after our comments on yesterday's show that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. That uh, we had thought. We need to print a retraction. With our mouths. Yes. <laughs> uh, that, that Matt Nagy had used the timeout to ice the kicker when in fact the clock was going to be run, and so he used it to stop the clock. Yeah, that play, he is not a psycho. When I was watching wild. it, it was yeah. Just hold on. The uh, that play was wild because the they, they the refs put the ball down, and the clock still hadn't gone. And it was multiple seconds later when Matt Nagy called the timeout. So I maybe the refs were still trying to get everybody set before they could start winding the clock. And it so that's where it felt like oh the. They're leaving it stopped, which is bizarre. But then I, w I did go back and check the tape on the kick, and Matt Nagy was wrong there. He still should have thrown the Hail Mary. You did mm, check that tape? Yeah, yeah I checked that, it. That's a good point. Just want to make sure. I'm correcting, giving Matt Nagy the – And uh, apologizing yeah, for yes. nothing. Yes. Okay. I'm washing it out. <sighs> is that the – I mean, is that your opinion? Of the, the Hail Mary? Yeah. yeah. I, yes, I, I 100%. Think he had to. He, he, your kicker – literally couldn't get there his when you're, career when you're long five was, yards short his career long was 10 yards under what you were trying to have him kick which was one of the longest field goals in the history of the nfl like it, i know i know that yeah i mean your odds of completing a hail mary are microscopic as well they're much higher than, than someone being able to add an additional five yards to a kick yeah i mean but where do you draw the line 63 yard field goal 60 okay. it just depends on the kicker Sure, that's where you got to know your personnel. I mean, most I mean, most kickers don't have sixty yard field goals in there. Exactly, but but you maybe you catch you catch a breeze on the right night, and you it just feels like the odds of hitting a field goal like that are higher. It it, it really just depends on the player. There's yeah. there's sure there's just you need to know what is impossible because the odds of doing the odds of me flying is zero. Uh, if I literally cannot kick the ball that far, then don't try. 
But we don't know that, right? We don't know well, what he's th- made in practice before. No, no, no. They do. So maybe he is. Maybe he uh, has great practice kicks. <laughs> uh, Greg Zerline, speaking of kickers, on the reserve COVID list on Tuesday. So that was today's news notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Grab the Sleeper app, join the breaking alerts channel. It is faster than every other source. And before we talk some trades, ladies and gentlemen, want to thank our sponsor for today, Truebill. How many free trial subscriptions end up costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars long after forgetting to cancel? Well, now Truebill is helping you manage that situation. It's the new, it's a new app. It helps you identify and stop paying for subs that you just you don't need, you don't want, or you just simply forgot about. On average, people save up to seven hundred and twenty dollars a year with Truebill because, like, sometimes companies make it difficult to cancel. Well, Truebill makes it incredibly simple. Just link your accounts, and Truebill will cancel the unwanted subscriptions in just one tap. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel those subscriptions, so you don't have to do it. I, which I I've, I've used. Yes, and, and they like, and they did it. They canceled the subscriptions with a button click. I love when I use something before they're even a sponsor on this show because I was a long time subscriber to Truebill, it, and it has other things too. It alerts you. It's like you know, hey, a large purchase came through. Hey, you've got these bills due next week. It it's just it's a very helpful tool uh, that helps you manage your finances. Just make sure you're staying on top of things. You know. They have saved over 2 million users and helped or, and helped them save over $100 million. Don't fall for subscription scams. Start canceling today at Truebill.com slash footballers. Go right now, Truebill.com slash footballers. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash footballers. And, uh, guys, let me ask you a question. Do you enjoy uh, traveling to the post office? Oh, no. No. And do you? Uh, what if I threw in a little mix of the holiday season to your going to the post office? I'd rather be at the DMV. <laughs> I mean, it's not a good time. And uh, you can save time and money if you use stamps.com instead of going to the post office. You can compare rates, print labels, a- access exclusive discounts. And this is on UPS and USPS services all year long. For goodness sakes, don't go to the post office during the holidays. That is a bad time. Uh, whether you are selling online, if you are running an office like we are, if you have a side hustle, uh, you got to turn to stamps.com. And like I said, you'll get discounts and it's just a great resource. Save time and money this holiday season with stamps.com. Sign up with the promo code footballers for a special offer that includes a four week trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page and enter the code FOOTBALLERS. Let's talk trades. Well, we're going to use this Wednesday episode to talk trades. Lots of trade questions, players that have been brought up in trade discussions and rumors, and what should we do with them? And uh, there's a pretty solid day trader article up on the website every week by Jeff Greenwood. And you can check that out at the fantasyfootballers.com. We also have, you know, we, we haven't mentioned a lot of the tools available to the foot clan recently, but the strength, the schedule tool, I've been using that all the time now as, as you know, trade deadlines are approaching and you want to, this is the time where maybe you're starting to peak at the playoff schedule. Um, it's really nice to, to look ahead at a glance quickly at, all teams at a certain position, and you can change the the weekly ranges when it matters the most for you. So the one of the most mentioned players regarding trade talks, trade four, trade away, hold him. Right. It's Antonio Gibson running back for the Washington football team. Um, people with questions about his value. So we can start with the discussion on the Antonio Gibson landscape and then get into some specifics with players. But, you know, people want to know, what do you do with Gibson? What is the upside, the downside? And I don't know if you guys saw yesterday, they were talking about, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick going in for another MRI. I mean, it all sounded extremely negative to me in terms of any potential return for him. And, you know, the, 
that would be a variable, right? Like if sure. Ryan Fitzpatrick was coming back, there would be a variable there where you're saying maybe the game script for the, the Washington football team changes from what it's been. The defense has not been good. Gibson has been banged up. Yeah, What's I mean, the sentiment? Your hope um, is that there are going to be good changes, especially regarding health coming off of the bye week, health and rest for Gibson. Um, yeah, your hope at the quarterback position, but that one is is gone. Logan Thomas, uh, even Terry McLaurin, who's been banged up. So if you want to look at this glass half full, it's that this team was really, really banged up. They had the bye week at a very important time. They're going to come out, be a little healthier, um, and have a much better second half of the season. And if that happens, Antonio Gibson should be really good for fantasy football. Now, that's the glass half full. That is, I have drank that. It is is empty now. <laughs> the glass oh, is no. gone because I don't believe that. Um, I, I that's my hope, and I could see how that happens. But this team had some hopes to winning the division. That's gone. They are not in the running to the the Dallas Cowboys won the division already. Um, their defense was supposed to be great. They're terrible. Um, the the vibes there are awful. I don't think that one week of rest is enough to heal the ailments of Antonio Gibson. So I think you're going to have more of what you've seen the last month, which is not great fantasy output. But because there is a narrative and there is hope, and he's passed his by, I think you can sell Antonio Gibson um, on the hope of his talent and on the hope of being past the by and healthy. You have to just decide which side of the camp you're on. And here is how I'm handling Antonio Gibson. If you are out, you need to you need to trade him right now. Like immediately start building a package trade to get Antonio Gibson out because his value is low. But it's but, about to get lower. But Tampa Bay and Carolina are the next two matchups, which are going to be disgusting unless somehow Terry McLaurin draws a pass interference in the end zone, and there is a one-yard touchdown available for Antonio Gibson, then he'll have a fine fantasy week. If that doesn't happen, it's going to be two bad weeks. However, if you are on the other side that you're like, I'm going to believe in the talent, you wait those two weeks, Buy him. and then you trade for him uh, because the after that, Seattle, Vegas, Philadelphia multiple times, Dallas multiple times, like – the schedule does open up, and I think over the stretch of weeks 12 through through 17, Antonio Gibson will be a fine running back to play. I, I lean on Jason's sentiment. Uh, I, I put action to that. I mean, I traded him away for Damian Harris. You have a player that is either in a two- or three-person timeshare with an injury risk who isn't playing good football. I want to be clear about that. I saw a metric recently about players – who are getting more or less than the expected yardage on the plays called, he is he was dead last. So there's yeah. there's an element of, you know, if you want to make the excuse for him, make the excuse that maybe it's an injured Antonio Gibson trying to make plays, but when you limit the amount of touches a player gets, you limit the touchdown opportunities, you put in other players in the backfield, you have an offense that's not good. This is it. it the, the odds are long that you're going to be happy. And so that's where I reside. And let, let's put it to test to the test. Uh, YouTube question from Jarrett. Antonio Gibson for Javante Williams. Would you do that trade? Oh, that's interesting. I think I would. Uh, yes, I think I would. I would do that trade. I, that I, makes three of us. I still see a huge upside potential for the second half of the season for Javante. Would you trade Antonio Gibson to... Uh, and Lockett, so Gibson and Lockett together for Zeke. This question from Instagram. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a no-brainer. E, yeah, I would do it. Uh, Twitter, Cody wants to know, do I trade Antonio Gibson for David Montgomery straight up? Yeah, yeah, I absolutely. That. I mean, obviously, you, you're going to be without Montgomery this week. He's on Correct. by, but I would still, <laughs> I would do that knowing he that. Lo he looked really good. He looked great, and he was back to you know 85% of the snaps. Yeah. It, it wasn't a ton of opportunities because they – couldn't, but he just he was the dude against again. a tough and, run yes. defense. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it yeah. was before the bye. I mean, you know what I mean. Like they said, 
he's fully healthy. Right. We're not worried about limiting him at all. And now he gets another week of rest. So, yeah, I, I really like David Montgomery going forward. Mike, I'll turn to you here with the number two most mentioned player in trade talks. Aaron Jones running back for the Green Bay Packers. Trade for, trade away, hold player. Um, people are worried about Aaron Jones. They they see the, you know, the utilization, the fact that A.J. Dillon's involved, and, you know, they want to know if they should kind of move forward or right. cash in. or Where are you right now sentiment-wise on Aaron Jones? I, like, my instinct on Aaron Jones is – Honestly, to to try and block block out the noise of the last couple of weeks for the Green Bay Packers and go trade for him. Uh, it's been a wild ride. I know he he ended up as like the, the RB five, but even in that week, it was like inefficient. It was just a, an abundance of volume because they had no wide receivers and they they were not supposed to win this game, which they end up winning. Then it's against Kansas City, and you have Jordan Love, who looks like an absolute disaster. Then you have Aaron Rodgers out in the making all sorts of headlines uh, for his interview on, on the uh, the Pat McCaffrey show. But like it, Rodgers is Rodgers will be back. There's a chance he's not back this weekend, but he is going to come back, and they're going to make a playoff run. Aaron Jones, for everything that has gone on for the ups and downs, is the running back eight on the year. He has been far more helpful than detrimental to your fantasy football team. I think there's just a mid-season uh, holding of the breath right now of starting to worry because you got to get that team prepared for the playoffs. And Aaron Jones is the type of running back that, despite A.J. Dillon being worked in more, I still want Aaron Jones as a as a focal piece, as one of my top two running backs that I can start in the playoffs. I agree that I would be trading for Aaron Jones. Uh, he's always been a player that has had disappearing games where it just doesn't go his way. And then he comes back and blows up for three touchdowns or is super involved in the passing game for a week or two. Um, do you, where are you? Uh, I, I am in agreement. I, I worry about um, the touches that AJ Dillon is getting a little bit and it, 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 it nerfs, um, you know, those monster games from him a little bit. But it, that doesn't matter. He's better than most running backs in the NFL. He's better than most other options you have for fantasy football. So just because he's not what he can max out to be does not mean he is not a very, very valuable commodity in fantasy football, being the most talented running back on one of the better offenses for a team that's going to win the majority of their games, be up, be running the clock out, get up by scoring touchdowns. So um, I agree, Aaron Jones is a trade four target, especially off of the horrific game where it's easy to forget like, okay, Rodgers wasn't a part of it. You just kind of look at what have you done for me he lately. Somehow, he had two targets. He didn't catch either of them. Like if, if he last year or last week's stat line was 14 opportunities, he was 12 for 53 on the ground. That's that's fine. That's acceptable. But when you catch no passes with that, it makes the week feel like a just com it's a complete turd for fantasy football. And if Rodgers was throwing that ball, he's catching at least one of those targets, probably both of them. The last two weeks have not been predictive with uh, injuries to Devontae Adams in the receiving court for one week and then no Aaron Rodgers. I wanted to glance back at, you know, since week four, A.J. Dillon's averaging 10 attempts per game. Sure. I went and looked at like Jamal Williams and the involvement when they were there together, and it looked like he was around seven to eight. So there's not a huge disparity in utilization there uh, between Aaron Jones. And it feels a lot like I said, I brought it up the other day, like the Kamara Ingram or Kamara and Tony, Tony Brooks, James Jones Jr. Right. or Kamara and Latavius Murray. Like they want to use him and not use him in the way that you would use a Derrick Henry or a Zeke or somebody like that. Aaron Jones threw nine games. Now, I know he has receiving touchdowns as well, but through nine games has three rushing touchdowns. And he's still the running back eight. Like this, that is that is not the Aaron Jones that we have seen for three straight years. I think that the positive touchdown regression is coming uh, on the ground. So let's look at some of the questions regarding Aaron Jones. YouTube question, uh, 
we kind of answered this one. I'm seven and two. I'm really worried about Aaron Jones. I'm solid at running back. And even if I trade him for a wide receiver, I just don't know what to do because of Dylan. We answered that. Um, what about Aaron Jones for Tyreek Hill? Which side do you like on that trade? Instagram question from Sam. Um, it's, it's fair. They're, they're both great at their respective positions in a vacuum. I would rather have Tyree kill. Um, but this is team dependent. Uh, you don't want to trade away a running back if it's going to leave you, um, scrambling and out of depth. Uh, so look at your team. If, if it makes sense, if you've got the depth at running back, sure. Grab, grab Tyreek. What about, you know, we talked about the rumors with Beckham and maybe by the time you're listening to this, he already has a home and this is stupid, but do you look at Devontae Adams or Tyreek Hill differently at all with the potential addition and the targets that Odell Beckham will come into on those teams? I, I don't really. I mean, to say that he wouldn't come in and take two or three targets away from the incumbent, he will. But I don't think that that is enough to really move the needle for those guys who are at their – they're at the top of the mountain. So you, you take, you know, you take a step down from the peak and you're still at the top of the mountain. Um, so I'm not I'm not very worried. We've seen years with Aaron Rodgers where he has supported uh two top twenty four three. Yeah, three top twenty four, two top twelve guys. Uh so I, I don't think that Devontae Adams is gonna be hurt by that. And if he goes to the Chiefs, I just I really have a hard time believing he's gonna get used as much as you know, he's just going to be a slightly better to Marcus Robinson. We've got an interesting update here from Tom Silverstein saying, according to an NFL source, the Packers are only offering the veteran minimum to Odell Good Beckham. for you, At least that's Green where they're starting. Bay. No, I mean, it makes sense. The Packers don't do things like this. So this is right. more – when I thought about, you know, when they said this is where he wants to be, I'm like, he's, he's going to go for free. I mean, you're, you're going to go into this team because you want to display that you still have it with the – best thrower in football or one of the best throwers in football right. um, because the Packers don't make these deals. I'm curious, Al, you know, Mr. Mr. Packer over there, what your s thought process is because to me, the Packers are a better football team with Odell than without him. Probably, but I'd rather him not sign with the Packers. Now, is that because you have Devontae Adams on your league of record team? No. <laughs> it's you, we got enough negativity going on in the, in the title town right now. And you, you feel like Odell could bring negativity to he, your franchise? He brings drama, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you're there and you've got those kicking nets, I'd watch out. Uh, question from YouTube. Uh, I picked up the Muth. Oh, congratulations. He was super Luth. Oh, so Luth. We, I, oh, hold on, hold on. Very important. Yeah, I, I bet I know where you're going. Very important Friar Muth discussion. Yeah, we, I, I know right where you're here, going. Right here, right now, we have to decide. How do you spell Luth? How do you spell Luth? It's got to be L U T H. See, that's I, I just don't because know. He, here's and I get it, I get it, and I'm gonna listen to. I'm not just okay. gonna. I'm not just gonna talk. You guys can. You guys can uh, <laughs> convince me otherwise. Stuff. But maybe but, the most important thing we've talked about in a while. It's pronounced Muth, <laughs> Muth, uh, but it's spelled M U T H, which you would read Muth. Yes. Right. But his name dictates the M-U-T-H because that is correct that's how it's spelled okay so if that M-U-T-H is muth then L-U-T-H is luth the logic train works however yes. when you spell it L-O-O-T-H you do build in a little bit of the luth you yeah, built in sure. you it built in a better. little bit of the and you remove it, all doubt for like if someone's just stumbling upon the muth is luth mm -hmm. for the very first time. You're there's, teaching them how to say no muth. No, no, no. There's still doubt there because what they're going to read the is the muth is, is luth. <laughs> no, and that makes are, no sense. They won't so read that. what you need to do, in my opinion, is it's either M-U-T-H, L-U-T-H, or it's M-O-O-T-H, L-O-O-T-H. No, no. no okay, then, it, then, good, then that settles it. I agree. That's It's M-U-T-H, L-U-T-H. I listened and I have now declared. We are no, no, after the no. show, Brooks. Let, after we post this podcast, we need to get a poll up. I've also been paying attention to social media and how people choose to to orate this. And I've it, I've done both. I have too. And but I think that I am formally in the camp of the muth m u t h is 
L O O T H. That's where I've landed. Okay, that's the worst one. Yeah. <laughs> No, the worst one is your little M O O T H. I agree. Where you change his I, last name like a crazy person. I agree person. that's terrible. M U T H L U T H. No. The muth is Luth. No, because I see people out there and they're writing Luth, man. They're they're th the double O. You want that in there. But so what are we doing? We're doing a poll? Yeah, I think And we are we put, abiding by the poll? I think we should abide by the poll. We're mm. this, we're uh, we're men of the people. <sighs> this is tough. <laughs> that's going to be tough for Chase me. Chase is worried that that's his tough. side's going to lose. You realize if he if he ends up going out and not scoring any fantasy points, he put up a goof. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very nice, very uh, nice. This thing yes. is caught on, yes. man. Oh, uh. it's important to me that some sometime in his when he goes into the end zone, he's hearing from the crowd, and somebody's screaming, "The muth is Luth." I'm sh I'm sure it's hard to oh like it's already built in. Because of the the vowel sound that the whole crowd just goes muth. Because anytime someone has double O sound in their name, they all it it just happens, and but, it sounds like they're getting booed. But but I'm telling you, like now, when I meet people that know the show and mm -hmm. they say, "Hey, love your show," the next thing that they say is, "The muth is loose, yeah, baby." Because You're darn it's right, so, it's fun. It's so fun to say. All right, so about the player. <laughs> about the player. Should I trade away TJ Hawkinson because I picked up Pat Fryermuth is the question. And um, Well, it's, uh, you got you, you got to have the context of it because initially it's like, well, no, you would – TJ Hawkinson is going to be the better fantasy tight end moving forward. But do you have – Well, he's, the, he's far more valuable in trade as well. Yes. It, it, but do you have the confidence that you can use Hawkinson – to go out there and upgrade a, a wide receiver or a running back and then have the Muth as your starting tight end. These, specifically with tight ends, this is more complicated because I also don't like giving other people in my league a tight end that is a competitive tight end. Like there is a real yes. risk involved in doing that. If I have these two players, I'm not looking at this as – I'm going to just try to go cash in right here, right now. I'm probably playing Hawkinson. But here, this one's going to put you to the test, and this one's from Brendan Wood off of YouTube. Has the Muth. His running back two was Chase Edmonds, who is now out for, you know, three minimum. Like Chase Edmonds is going to miss some time. So now Brendan's running back two is Naheem Hines. He could trade Hawkinson right now for Javante Williams and have that as his running back two, and then downgrade to the Muth. I'd probably do that. Yeah. yeah con that <laughs> context is context is everything. Because, like, I can tell you right now, I have... That's good value. This is, this right. is my situation. I have TJ Hawkinson, and I picked up Pat Fryer Muth for the bye. I, I have these two guys. I am not looking to trade Hawkinson. Hawkinson is my tight end. I'm not looking to cut Pat Fryermuth either. I'm holding both of them for now. But if I have a need and I can capitalize, then then absolutely I would take advantage of that. But in a vacuum, just I'm not seeing the value of these guys and saying Fryermuth is locked. He's not locked. He's a rookie. I've talked about all the bad games that you're going to have from Kyle Pitts because he's a rookie tight end. That's still true of the better rookie tight end. So, oh. um, so uh, yeah, I, I'm. I'm willing um, to uh, help my team, obviously, by trading Hawkinson for an upgrade where it matters, but I am not wanting to have to rely on Pat Fryermuth as a weekly starter going forward. My favorite thing to do in these situations when you have an emerging tight end who has a big game on my team is use that player. This is independent of Hawkinson. Is use that player in a multiplayer trade to acquire a better tight end that I can count on. If you get two great weeks from Pat Fryermuth and then you have a trade that involves a couple wideouts and like you have Fryermuth and they have Waller or you have Fryermuth and they have Kelsey and then you mix the wide receivers in and then you can make a compelling argument to the other manager that they're not downgrading that much. Right. That's the argument you want to make is uh, it's not much of a difference. Look at what look at what Muth has done. Yeah. Don't you want to say the Muth is Luth on your team? It's very impressive. You know, seven targets, seven targets. I know. Six. Like, he's 
The last three games, he's averaging a 20% target now, share. Now, yeah, if you can take Friar Muth and pair him with a Devin Singletary to get a James Conner or, uh, or up, yeah, I mean, I, I would rather trade Friar Muth than Hawk. Would you rather trade Hawkinson for Javante Williams or the Muth for James Conner? The Muth for James Conner. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're, Connor should be better than Javante rest of the season, barring an injury to Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Um, what about trading away Daryl Henderson? This question from, from YouTube, Hudson wants to know, you know, he, he's missed out twice out of three games on great matchups. He has a history of getting banged up, including those games where he left oh, and every, came back. Every, every week. single every game. Week. You can start He Sony has hit Michelle. points that are just – He's the new Shady McCoy. Sony Michelle is the starter from about <laughs> three minutes left in the first half to the end of the half. That's when that's when Henderson usually goes down. He just likes but then a he good goes half. back for a Oh, while. absolutely. He's yeah, he just he likes a the, good halftime break. That's right. It refuels. And he's got an upcoming bye. It, and you really look at this um rest of season. I know Mike, you you were very big fan of Daryl Henderson being a potential league winner. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to know where you're at with him now. Do you take advantage of the upcoming buy and his injury concerns to try to capitalize, or are you? Is he a hold? Like, where are you? He's a he's a hold for me. I it, like I I get it coming off of the Tennessee game. It feels bad, but right before that, he was the running back three. I mean, he has been he has been incredible for fantasy football. He's currently a top twelve running back, and like one of the trade offers were. Uh, we we were sent is do you trade Daryl Henderson for for James Robinson, and it for me that's that's an easy no. Like I I want the player on the better offense. James Robinson should be solid moving forward, but Henderson's on a he's just on such a good team that had a real stinker that if if the sentiment on Henderson is down right now, and I can leverage that and the upcoming bye week to say hey I'm going to help your team. I'm going to take Henderson off your hands. I would do that immediately. It's not an easy no for me on the James Robinson because James Robinson was was great. You know, right before he was injured, he had a month long stretch where he was a an RB one every single week, and his passes by. So you are factually definitely getting an extra game out of these players, assuming no injuries from here on forward with both. I get what you're saying, and I'm not. I don't think I would trade Henderson. The for Robinson James. playoff schedule is actually pretty juicy. Yeah, um, but that well, that's more what I wanted to bring up. It's not trade Daryl Henderson for James Robinson. I I see that as pretty even, but it is a trade for James Robinson. James Robinson is okay. coming off an injury. Um, is a name on a team that is so easy to just fall out of love with. I mean, you can forget what James Robinson did in the blink of an eye. And I think that it won't be too hard to acquire him. He's not, you know, you're not going to go out there and be able to trade for Zeke and or trade for, you know, a great running back. James Robinson is probably as good a running back as you can get for, you know, a package of mediocrity from your team. One injury follow-up that we didn't mention in the news, but both Ramondre Stevenson and Damian Harris are both in concussion protocol. <sighs> okay. What was that? Was you were you thinking to get some news? Or I wanted clarity. I wanted health. No, they're both at pre- least for one of them. They're both going through the process. Uh, let me quick fire some trade questions to you before we get into our um, Thursday night football breakdown. Um, Instagram question: I gave Debo. Oh, this is a review. Ooh. I gave Debo for Kyler Murray and Kyle Pitts. Who won? Ooh, I think I'd take the. Probably the Kyler side. Yeah, me too. I think you did you did well for where we're at with Debo right now. You know, Kittle has been gone. Ayuk has has become more involved. You have a potential quarterback changeover. Like Debo's rest of season, I don't see being better than the beginning. Yeah, and and while this last week probably felt bad because you didn't have Kyler and Kyle Pitts stunk, I I would say you didn't have Debo either, right? You, Two points or something like that. Yeah, I, I would say you you. You won going oh, forward. Was Debo that bad? No, he. I don't think he was. Oh. I think I'm. I'm thinking about like halfway through the game, he had like two points, and then I he got he a got screen. Some, yeah, he got that big screen because mm-hmm. he just finds a way yeah. to get it done. Five for sixty-three. What a terrible game! <laughs> he was almost going to not play, and then played on the calf again. And I mean, what a resilient 
player. Just a, just a, just a model of health. Yeah. Uh, YouTube question from Daniel. This is a good one. Uh, buy low on T. Higgins? Question mark. Hasn't scored since week two. Barely missed a touchdown last week. But obviously, it's been kind of nasty for Joe Burrow in recent weeks. Tough division. Tough matchups coming up. What do you do? Are you are you actively pursuing T. Higgins? I, I I love T. Higgins. I think that he is a great target because he's not going to cost a lot, and his his ability to go north is there. You just get in the end zone. Since he got injured in the last five games when he's been back, he's on 142 target pace. He, he is getting passes and opportunity th mm -hmm. thrown his way. It has not resulted in fantasy glory, but I believe in the talent of Higgins. It's, it's, it, it hasn't been Right, and it hasn't awful. been bad. It's not been just you know t terrible for your team. He's basically scoring 10 points every single week. I, I really like T. Higgins. All right, how about this one? Instagram question from Casey. Would you trade? We built this city. Never. Would you trade Michael Pittman? <laughs> For Chris Godwin. Oh, man. Yes, I would. <laughs> that's that's cashing in. Where? Follow up. Would you <laughs> Thank you. Follow up. Would you trade Pittman for David Montgomery? If I need a running back, sure. Yeah, of yeah. course you would. That's a, that's a very fair value. But right. he, I love, love Pittman the rest of the season. But for Chris Godwin, with the current status of Antonio Brown. And the status of... Rob of Gronk and, and everything. Rib Ribskowski. Like, you can't get back. You, yes, yes. I, go get Chris Godwin. I really enjoyed that pivot from never to <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get him. I'm trying to be reasonable. No, it's good. I just I'm I'm not I'm not uh, criticizing you. I really enjoyed it. Jets are starting Mike White this week. Ooh, Elijah. And then Elijah. Uh, Elijah Moore. I yes. I would like him a lot more right. with Mike White. Yeah, Corey Davis is back this week. And then uh, Zach Wilson's going to use the week to get healthier, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. So. Him and, him and uh, Darnold. Let's get healthy. Let's get healthy. We're going to let Are these backups handle. Are still handle. passing x-rays around <laughs> in New York? <laughs> Thursday Night Breakdown. Derek, it's just it's the same x-ray. Is there a doctor? They borrowed one. Is there an no? Is there a doctor out there that is like this is what his specialty is? Mm. Like they go, let's go I'll second find opinion. Your injury. What's what's hurting? What area of his body? <laughs> it starts firing. Why don't you rifling just rifling through the yeah. through the drawer? Um, man, yeah. How we knew we knew Sam would they would find a way to keep him out this game. They have to. He is a he is a broken man. They could be a playoff team if they win this week. So, and Atlanta loses. They could be in the playoffs. Absolutely, because their defense is great. And when they've got Christian McCaffrey, they usually win the game. Um, since we're just on the topic, just I, I don't even want to say it. Oh, then say it. But is there any chance that maybe how bad he's been playing lately is because he's got a got fracture in his throwing shoulder? Like, he's been throwing the ball terribly. And he they, was not throwing the ball that bad at the beginning of the year. Is it? Is it possible that maybe it's because he's got a Didn't broken bone I mean, in his it shoulder? It just happened, though. I think he's been dealing with it for for a while, though, and then they've just finally found out what it is. No, because these are decision-making interceptions. Oh, yeah. The scapula didn't affect the rolling left, throwing it you know, 10 feet over his guy's head, pick six. Throwing it over to the head, Mike. Yeah, shoulders. I, you know, I will shoulders. leave room for margin that – Perhaps. Oh, come on, guys. Oh, I'm not saying he's good. Then he's had a broken scapula since he got drafted, <laughs> based on this argument. As a solid it, counter come on. punch. It took a really long time to find it. Yeah, it's oh, been my broken gosh. since the draft. Yeah. Uh, no, he stinks. Uh, Thursday night, reminder, take your players out of the flex. Put them into your positional spots. The Baltimore Ravens at six and two, taking on the two and seven Miami Dolphins in Miami. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Baltimore minus seven and a half. The over/under is forty-six and a half in this game. Uh, Tua is a game time decision with the finger. The, Tua is not going to play. He is a game time decision with the finger. But everything that I see from uh, you know medical doctors in the industry, pretty much all of them would say that he will be active in a backup because they. They don't have another option, but that he will not be the starter. Okay, storylines from this game then. You have Miles Gaskin who managed to 
ping pong his way to a nice finish last week. Jacoby Brissett will be behind center if Tua doesn't play. You know, I like Mike Gesicki a ton. Mm -hmm. You know, Baltimore is so vulnerable to. Oh my gosh. Do you guys realize? Uh, I knew Miles Gaskin had a good fantasy game. Do you know his actual game line? No, but I want to. He carried the ball 20 times. What? He had 20 carries? He had 20 carries. In 20 carries, how many rushing yards? Did Miles Gaskin put up against the Houston Texans? Well, let's say it was bad. Let's say it was three yards a carry. Okay. Okay, so 60. I'm, you're going to need to go down. Okay, let's say it's really bad. Okay. 50. You're going to have to keep going down. 40. He yeah. had 20 carries? He had 20 carries. B below 40 yards. Uh, 30. 34. <laughs> 20 for 34. That is impressive. Well, this is a how did you get is, that many carries? How a, did you how did you stay on the field? This is a terrible <laughs> offensive line. A terrible. They have given up forty seven more pressures on their quarterback than the next closest team, which is Carolina. This offensive line has made it difficult on the running backs, the quarterbacks. Um, it, it's it's three other linemen are tied for the most pressures allowed in the league. Like they're competing oh. with each other to allow more people to like. Please blitz me so I can take the lead. That's where we're at. Um, so Gross. it's going to be tough sledding against Baltimore. Baltimore, uh, they have had a tendency to surprise you with who they <laughs> find themselves in deficits against before they come back and win the game, whether they were getting completely blitzed by Detroit or getting blitzed by the Colts or, you know, even this past week having to come back. But expectations have to be low on for this offense in Miami outside of maybe, you know, Mike Gesicki who gets seven targets a game. You know, Javon, uh, you know, Parker's going to be out. Waddle and a PPR, Parker. man. He, he will be fine. It's okay. It's not great production, uh, but eight for 83. I mean, he's, he's seeing, you know, over the past month, Jalen Waddle is averaging nearly 11 targets a game. Are you starting – Miles Gaskin over any of the Baltimore running backs? That is a fabulous question. Latavius over, did not practice. I, I would not be surprised if he misses this game again. I uh, Yeah, I would agree. It's a Thursday game, and he's not practicing still. I would certainly um, start – if that's the situation, I would start Freeman ahead of Miles Gaskin. As would I. But then I would start Gaskin ahead of the next options from Baltimore. On the Baltimore side, Lamar is locked in. As always, and so should Hollywood Brown. I mean, Hollywood has been outstanding. He's the mm -hmm. wide receiver five on the year. Um, Rashad Bateman, are you willing to – would you play Waddle or Bateman in this matchup? <sighs> um, scoring Waddle. scoring format really does matter because uh, PPR makes it easy. That is Jalen Waddle. If you're down to half or standard – I think it's still probably Waddle. Like Baltimore, you're right. They've surprised us in which teams are able to get a lead against them, and they have to come back. I, I just can't imagine we're going to find the Miami Dolphins up at halftime, and we're all shaking our heads saying, "What is happening here?" So I, what about Marvin Jones? Would you play Marvin Jones against Indy? That's a good matchup, or would you play Bateman? I would. Oh, uh, I don't I think like I'm going to go questions. Marvin Jones, but that that one. Yeah, you said you liked him this week. The excitement uh, is certainly f more on the Rashad Bateman side. The, he's looked good. He's been getting the targets. He's still a rookie, so the the unknown. I, I you know that's a coin flip situation. It is. I have Marvin Jones at currently at wide receiver 37 and Bateman at 38. So I I, I guess I go with Marvin Jones. Okay. Mark Andrews is locked into your lineup. So yep. that'll do the Thursday night preview uh, for the Thursday night preview. Anything else you guys want to add? Any new news there, Brooksy? No new news. Okay. You still incredibly wealthy? Yeah. Okay. That's yep. good. <laughs> it's good to know. Yeah. You know. If something goes wrong here, you can support all of our families for generations. Well, you see inflation. Money, 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 money. Infl inflation's going up. I just want to make sure Brooks is okay. He's prices the, of a loaf of bread. And he's, he's the reason. The, yeah, he's raising the prices on everybody. Oh, because he's overpaying for stuff? Yeah, like 
he he just he got bored a couple weeks ago and he bought Kroger. Right. That when he was bored. Yeah. Yeah. He's like bread, double it. You know how you know how like when sometimes we're bored, like I'm gonna go make a fantasy trade. Brooks just buys He acquires businesses. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. And then he hikes the prices up. <laughs> Wow. He yeah. forces inflation on the economy. That's brilliant. Well, because right. it gives him more wealth. <laughs> He's a brilliant man. <laughs> He's a brilliant, brilliant producer and man. Uh, starts of the week tomorrow. Matchups for week 10. Check out the community at jointhefoot.com. That'll do it for today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Well, this episode, if you want to hear us live, we will be on Spotify Green Room this afternoon. Good luck on your waivers, everyone. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.